We have multiple bright regions emerging on the Earth-facing disk that are boosting that solar flux, and we have multiple coronal holes. One of them is in the Earth strike zone. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely getting interesting. We don't have an active sun yet, but as we take a look at our front-sided disk, you can see we've got a lot of bright regions emerging in Earth view, both in the south and in the north. In fact, we have this one bright region that's been firing off a few little mini solar flares, and then of course it begins to die and fizzle a little bit. This one was never really a sunspot, so it never got a designation. The big one is actually region 2808. That's the bigger one that's closer to the east limb there. That region is really what's been boosting the solar flux up into the high 70s. We were hoping it was going to get to the high, either the low 80s, but didn't quite make it there. But I believe we're going to be sitting with uh, the solar flux continuing to stay in the high 70s easily over the course of this week, mainly because we have so many of these active regions. Meanwhile, we also have a coronal hole, this finger-like coronal hole. This thing is rotating into the Earth strike zone right now. We're already beginning to see the effects from this, from the fast solar wind from this coronal hole and it could easily bump us up to storm levels at high latitudes and maybe give a skosh of a chance of aurora at mid latitudes but it won't last all that long maybe about a day before things begin to calm down but if you take a look at the east limb on the sun you could actually see another dark hole that region is the big uh, long awaited coronal hole that about a month ago gave us some sustained storming and brought some gorgeous aurora views down to mid latitudes and it looks like this hole has survived its far-sighted passage on the sun and it's rotating back into view and in about 10 days or so we could get that same kind of storming all over again. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, you can see where the X-ray flux has been sitting right about the B floor over the past few days. In fact, we actually even have popped a few uh, small flares. In fact, the C-class flare that you see here back on the night, that was due to region 2808 as it was a rotating into Earth view. But since then, things have kind of fizzled just a little bit. In fact, you can even see in the X-ray flux, that floor has kind of dropped a little bit. That does mean that the solar flux by proxy has also dropped. We didn't make it into the low 80s like we were hoping, but we are managing to hold on to the high 70s, and these will continue. This condition will continue easily over the next few days. In fact, we do have another region that's going to be rotating into Earth view here probably over the next four or five days. So easily we will maintain the mid to high 70s for solar flux, and that's decent news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. We should maintain marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side easily over this next week. And although the solar storming this past week has actually been pretty mild, we've actually still seen some gorgeous aurora in many places. Plus the fact I have pictures to show from last month's beautiful uh, solar storming that was sustained over multiple days. So I have some wonderful highlights for you, like these seen in Norway. And there was gorgeous shots in Russia. And the aurora was seen in Scotland. And it was also seen in the UK. Here's Norfolk. And also in Shetland. And as we begin to move over the pond, it was seen in multiple places in Canada. In fact, it was all over Manitoba. And it was also seen in Alberta. And as we dip down into the United States, it was seen in Michigan and in Lake Superior. And it was also seen in North Dakota, some beautiful oranges in North Dakota. And it also made it to Wisconsin. And as we now go down under, it was also seen in multiple places in New Zealand. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth 
here's the sun, and here's stereo A staring at the sun, well, pretty much from the side. And when we take a look at stereo's view, you can see there's a lot of bright regions in stereo's view, which is wonderful because it's going to keep up that solar flux for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. You can also see that finger-like coronal hole in the south and another one in the north. These are giving those small pockets of fast solar wind that we're expecting for, uh, especially for high latitude aurora over the next couple days. But then if you look way far in the east, you can actually see a much larger coronal hole in that southern region. That's going to be the big coronal hole that's going to potentially give us a bigger burst of fast solar wind in about two weeks. And that could bring us some sustained aurora just like it did last month because it sure looks like it's pretty well formed. So aurora photographers at mid latitudes, you might want to sit out the next, you know, week or so because it's going to be kind of hard to catch but man when this region rotates into the earth strike zone in about two weeks you're sure going to get a better chance for some aurora down at mid latitudes now one other thing is that we do have yet another big region on the uh, east limb in stereo's view this region is large enough and looks like it's going to be probably a sunspot so it may get yet another designation and that region should help keep that solar flux boosted easily over this next week so we're going to stay in that marginal radio propagation regime Switching to our moon, we are now passing through a new moon on our way to a first quarter, and by the 19th, the moon will still be only about 30% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, now is a great time to do it. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are being hit by that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's been rotating in through the Earth strike zone, and it has popped us up to active conditions multiple times over the past couple days. As a matter of fact, these conditions could likely continue easily over the next day or so, but high latitudes, NOAA's expecting at least unsettled conditions, but we have up to about a 30% chance of a major storm, and that could last easily through the rest of this weekend and before it begins to die down early in the beginning of the week. But we also have another pocket of fast solar wind that'll pick up about midweek. So at high latitudes, we might be storming on and off easily through the next five days or so. Now, mid latitudes, we are also only expecting unsettled conditions, but we still have about a 25% chance of active conditions over the next day or two, and then things will settle down reasonably quickly, and it'll be kind of sporadic, a little touch and go at mid latitudes. But again, around midweek, we have another chance for a small pocket of fast solar wind to hit us from that other finger-like coronal hole, and that could pop us up again to active conditions, but it's only going to last for a moment or so. But then, believe it or not, in about 10 days or so, we should have a much bigger chance at mid latitudes for a war when that much larger coronal hole will come through the earth strike zone and it will send us some decent fast wind and that could give us some sustained aurora down at mid latitudes so aurora photographers be sure to keep your batteries charged Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have a lot of bright regions on the Earth-facing sun this week, but we only have one sunspot, and that is region 2808. And although it did fire off a C-class flare earlier, it's actually been dying down and kind of fizzling out a little bit. So we're in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have no risk for radio blackouts right now, and this should make GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. You should be able to have decent GPS reception without any issues. We are, however, boosting that solar flux up into the high 70s, and it's going to maintain that way, we believe, especially with that new region that's going to be rotating into Earth view here in about oh, four or five days or so. So we'll manage to maintain marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side easily over this week and possibly into next week as well. Now, also because we are still climbing out of solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is a bit more intense than we'd like it to be, so you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. And I wanted to take a moment because I've been so incredibly humbled by what has transpired over the past couple days. Thanks to the Hamvention Awards Committee, I have been honored with the 2021 Technical Achievement Award. And this has been most unexpected, and I couldn't help but give a little public shout out to a few people who've meant so much to me. And this, of course, means the Hamvention Awards Committee. Thank you so much for embracing me and as part of the amateur radio community. I know I have not been a ham for all that long, 
but it means so much to me to to have a call sign and um, to be able to enjoy this hobby with you. And a special thanks to Michael Coulter, W8CI. I've enjoyed our email correspondences as well as seeing you in person. You've always been an inspiration. And Frank Biafor, WS8B, thank you so much, Frank, for, for this honor. Uh, honestly, uh, I can't wait to meet you in person. And of course, to a good friend, Tim Duffy, K3LR, thank you for all the encouragement and all the support. Even before I was an amateur radio operator, I appreciate everything you've done for me to get me involved in this hobby. And of course, thanks to Don Wilbanks. It's a special thanks to him, AE5DW. You were the one that brought me into the Amateur Radio Newsline family. You introduced me to Amateur Radio, and you got me to do space weather reports on Ham Nation. And that's another one. Thanks to the Ham Nation crew, including Bob Heil, K9EID. I've been a fan of yours for much longer than I've actually been your space weather girl. So it's been a pure pleasure and honor of mine to be able to serve as a member of Ham Nation. And then finally to Mike Sage, KN6 X Echo Whiskey Mike. <laughs> You've been my Elmer. You were the one that got me on the air. And hopefully you're going to be the one that's going to get me through that general and possibly even my extra. And I can't wait for it, especially as Solar Cycle 25 ramps up. So thank you all. I have been humbled, amazed, and I couldn't be more pleased to be part of this wonderful family. So the space weather this week, while it's not all that busy, well, it's not all that quiet either. We have a bunch of bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, including region 2808, which is a sunspot right now. And earlier this week, it did fire off a C-class flare before it began to fizzle a little bit. So that's good news in the sense that we don't have a lot of flare activity. We don't have a lot of solar storm activity either right now. But we have boosted that solar flux and keep it in the uh, high 70s for... Uh, uh, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, which means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side is here to stay. Plus, we have a new region that's going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next four to five days, and that will continue to keep that solar flux boosted well over this week and possibly into next week as well. Now, we also have a small coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone right now. We are already beginning to some of its effects and the fast solar wind that's coming. However, this is a small pocket of fast solar wind, so it means aurora photographers at high latitudes, you're going to be able to get a show of aurora, but if you're at mid latitudes, you may not want to uh, chase after this one because it may be, the show may be over before it even begins, basically. And we're going to have this pocket of fast solar wind, and then we're going to have another one in another couple days, and it's going to be the same kind of thing at mid latitudes. It's going to be very fleeting shows, so only if you're dedicated should you chase because we actually have a bigger coronal hole that's going to be rotating uh, into Earth strike zone in about two weeks or so that could give us some sustained uh, fast solar wind and that is going to be when we're going to see aurora really dip down to mid-latitudes. Cross, cross, cross your fingers, right? All right, and also as far as your GPS users are concerned, you know, things are looking pretty good for you right now. The solar flux isn't super high and the flare activity is pretty low and we're also reasonably quiet with solar storms. We're going to have a little bit of activity here over this next 24 hours and then again in another couple days but it's going to be really fleeting so it shouldn't affect gps uh, reception all that much except if you happen to be underneath the aurora or anywhere near those dawn dust terminators just be aware your reception may be a little bit glitchy i'm tamitha scove the space weather woman thank you for watching